It's another great day here at River Kids Online, and I am thrilled to be here with you. My name is Zach, and this is Alicia. And all month long, we've been talking about how we can get unstuck from all kinds of sticky situations. It just takes a little determination. Determination, determination is deciding, deciding it's worth it to finish, finish what you started. started. Everybody, get on your feet right now where you are. I want us to celebrate our God who can do anything. So lift your voices and worship Him together.
my heart come alive Suddenly brought to light when I miss you I'll need help to pick up our story today. I'll need a few volunteers who want to be actors. I found two volunteers. First, I'll need the two of you to play two of Jesus' disciples. First, we have Peter and John. We'll need something to distinguish these two from each other. So, what should Peter wear? Let's see what he picks out. Nice job, Peter. Looking good. Now, what about John? What will John choose to wear? Looking good. Okay, we have Peter and John. Perfect. Now how about you two go to the other side of the room and wait for the cue to enter on stage. See you later. I need one more volunteer. Ellie, could you help me please? All right, Ellie's gonna play the man who was born unable to walk, the paralyzed man. So every day, someone would bring him to the temple gate where he would sit and beg. One day, Peter and John were going to the temple and they passed by the man who couldn't walk. The man asked Peter and John for money. Uh, most people probably tried not to make eye contact with the man, but when he asked Peter and John for money, they didn't ignore him. Instead, they stopped and looked right at him. And in Acts chapter three, verse six, it says this, but Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I do have. In the name of Jesus Christ, get up and walk. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, Peter healed the man and the man was able to walk. He went into the temple courtyards with Peter and John where he praised God and jumped for joy. The healed man was making quite a scene and he started to draw a crowd. The people in the temple knew this was the same man who had been begging at the gate. They were amazed at what had happened to him. Peter wanted to make sure the people understood how he had been able to heal the man. So Peter spoke to them. Hmm. What could Peter use as a microphone? In Acts 3.12, it says, Peter saw this opportunity and addressed the crowd. People of Israel, he said, what is so surprising about this? And why stare at us as though we had made this man walk by our own power or godliness? 
Peter could have easily taken the credit for healing this man. He could have allowed people to praise him, but he wanted them to understand that God can do things that seem impossible. He gave all the credit and the glory to God. In Acts 3.16, he said, Through faith in the name of Jesus, this man was healed, and you know how crippled he was before. Faith in Jesus' name has healed him before your very eyes. Peter took the opportunity to tell people about Jesus. He told them how to turn away from their sin and how to follow Jesus instead. A lot of people were amazed by Peter's message, but there were some who were not so happy. These leaders didn't like how everyone seemed to be turning towards Jesus. They didn't believe that Jesus was the Son of God. They were stuck in their old ways of thinking. Well, when the religious leaders heard what Peter said, they became very angry. They didn't like Peter and John teaching about Jesus, even though it was the truth. The religious leaders and temple authorities arrested Peter and John. So the religious leaders took the two disciples to prison where they left them for the night. Well, the next day, a group of religious leaders, including the high priest Annas and his family, met to determine what to do with Peter and John. They had the two men brought to them. The man that Peter had healed was there too. The leaders asked Peter and John how they performed such an amazing miracle. In Acts chapter 4, verse 7, uh, it says this, that the leaders brought in the two disciples and demanded, by what power or in whose name have you done this? This was definitely a sticky situation for Peter and John. Because if they told the truth, it might mean they would really get in trouble. Do you think Peter told the truth? Thumbs up if you think so, thumbs down if you think he didn't. Well, let's see. In Acts chapter 4, verses 8 through 10, it says, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of our people, are we being questioned today because we've done a good deed for a crippled man? Do you want to know how he was healed? Let me clearly state to all of you and to all the people in Israel that he was healed by the powerful name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, the man you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead. So thumbs up because Peter decided to tell the truth. He knew that while the religious leaders believed in God, they didn't have the full picture. So through the power of the Holy Spirit, Peter used the opportunity to tell them about Jesus. Going on in Acts chapter 4, verse 12, Peter says, There is salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. This was a very bold statement. In fact, the leaders saw how courageous Peter and John were. They also realized that the disciples were regular men who didn't have any special training about God. It was clear that they really had been with Jesus and that they were able to be so brave because of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. There was nothing else the religious leaders could do. They were stuck. It was clear that Peter and John had healed a man. He was standing right there next beside them. But the leaders didn't want anyone else to believe in Jesus, so they gave Peter and John a warning to never speak in Jesus' name again. But Peter and John said this in Acts chapter 4, verse 20. They said, We cannot stop telling about everything we have seen and heard. Nothing could stop Peter and John. They had continued to obey God and tell others about Jesus. The religious leaders couldn't find a reason to keep them in prison, so they let Peter and John go. Peter and John showed determination even when they were thrown into jail and put on trial. It was a pretty sticky situation. But Peter and John, they continued to follow Jesus and do what they knew was right. They were able to make wise choices when things were difficult because they knew it was worth it to finish what they started. Because they kept going, even more people came to know Jesus. When life gets tough, we can have determination just like Peter and John did because we can trust God no matter what. We can rely on God and ask Him to give us the strength we need to keep going. Let's talk to Him about that now. Let's pray. 
God, thank you for this day and thank you for this message, your word that reminds us of your truth. God, thank you for giving Peter and John courage um, so they could finish what they started. God, thank you for being with us in our times of needs. When we feel like we want to give up, God, thank you for being there with us, for helping us move forward. God, I thank you for the strength that you provide each and every one of us. We love you, and in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Peter and John were confident and bold because of the Holy Spirit. They were able to keep going even when they were thrown in jail and put on trial. Remember, they didn't even do anything wrong. God gave them the strength to keep going. You see, Peter and John knew that Jesus is the one who had been promised from the very beginning. They knew that Jesus had come to save us from our sins and to make things right in our relationship with God. This news was far too great for them to keep it to themselves. Even when things got difficult, they were determined to tell others about Jesus. Remember our bottom line, to keep, keep going, going even, even when, when it, it gets, gets tough. tough. You can choose to finish what you started too. You can decide it's worth it even when things get tough. Maybe you're taking piano lessons and you like to play, but the lessons are getting really difficult. And there's not a lot of time in your day where you feel like you wanna practice. God can give you the strength to finish your lessons because it's worth it to finish what you started. Or maybe you just joined the soccer team, but you're not playing right now. You're on the bench, your coach isn't putting you in. You were excited, but you're not. Sometimes you might feel like quitting. With God's help, you can have determination to finish what you started. You can use this opportunity to be a good teammate and cheer on others. You know, maybe you can even get your friends on your team to come to River Kids. Let's take a look at our memory verse this month. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. It says, Let us not become tired of doing good. At the right time, we will gather a crop if we don't give up. In other words, don't give up. Because good things will come from your determination. God can use your wise choices in big ways. So I hope you had an awesome time with us today. And we are really counting down the days until we can see you in person again. So we hope you get to play outside and make wise choices and keep going. Have a great day and we'll see you next time. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Are you dead? I'm dead. Yes. Are you dead, Mom? Come on. <laughs> yeah. And then we'll cut. Perfect.